Hello, and welcome back to my Let's Play. Uh, this time we should actually have sound. So, um, I don't think I mentioned it. I did mention it in the original audio, but not in the uh, redone. But between the last episode and this one, I did actually skip ahead until um, specifically Perry was completed, our terraforming station. Um, and uh, we all, that also means that we also got our um, commercial ships off the line as well. I haven't done anything with them, just so I can cover their use, but they are off the line and we've almost got the um, the naval shipyards up at 16,000 and ready to start working again. So, first things first, um, I'll go through the various commercial ships that we've got. Um, Actually, I'll get I'll get the combat ships out. So we've got the several destroyers. We'll split them off. Um, there we go. Okay. So what we got? So we got the we got three explorers. Get them working again soon. We have the county. We have the Collins. And we have the Amphion. Alright. So I believe the Amphion is a salvager, so we'll set up salvaging. So you select your Rex. Yeah, that's a salvager. So you, you, first of all, you need to make sure that Rex is selected, otherwise you won't be able to see them. Once you have them selected, you see them there. All you have to do is just hit salvage, and that should salvage them. Now, one thing you want to make sure is that you have enough cargo space to salvage everything you, work, you need to pick up. So Canberra's are easy. Melbourne's one, two, three, four, five. That might be rough. So what I'll do is I'll salvage everything except the Sydney, and except Sydney, and then we'll see how the tonnage works out. There we go. Um, keep in mind that it will still try and salvage a ship even if it doesn't have any cargo, and any resources or components beyond the cargo space will disappear into uh, thin air, so uh, make sure that you do not waste it. Alright, now county. County, I believe, is our tug, so that one will remain. Uh, what's Collins? Collins. Uh, that's a construction. That's a construction ship. So the two that we have, Canberra and Sydney, we want to get some jump gates up. So we'll go to Canberra, build a jump gate, and Sydney, build the jump gate, and then we'll do a standard transit and build the jump gate again. We'll come back. We'll go to Canberra, and we will build. Jump gate there, come back through, and then we'll head back to Earth for a refuel. So that will take, no, oh, that's actually lying because it's waiting, but that will take um, 180 days per build, so about two years to do, plus travel time. So two years and 48 days, so uh, we've got plenty of time for that one. So, as for the orbital habitats, so uh, orbital habitats get built into these task groups. They don't get built into um, selected ones. They get built into the orbital habitats. Same with PDCs, they get built into PDCs, uh, planets, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, just realized we actually did give our orbital habitats some engines. So, the tug will essentially just give it a bit of a kick. So, you go to task groups. We find our orbital habitat one. You select the tractor specific ship, lock on, add move. 
So that will attach this ship to this ship. What that means is that for purposes of speed, engine power, all that, it will treat these two ships as the same ship. So it will combine the tonnage and it will combine the engine power. So because the engine power on this one is substantially uh, oversized for itself, we should see a substantial increase over the 390 that the uh, 309 that Perry is able to do. So once we do that, because it's a terraformer, we will take it to Luna. There we go. And we'll extract the chips. Uh, because of the way, uh, this is a very particular bug or glitch that sometimes happens where terraformers, um, if you don't use the move to command, terraformers will not actually get attached to the body. Same thing with asteroid miners. Um, you do want to make sure that you always move to before you do anything else to it. Um, so keep that in mind. So we'll close this off. We'll zoom in to Earth. <clears throat> What else do we have? Exploration. Do we want to explore anything? Not right now. We don't want to trigger or piss anybody off right now. Because we're still working on things. So, I don't need any of that. What's industry doing? So we've got construction factories on the way, you know, sort of built up. I've got 20... Um, construction brigades and we're slowly building up to a thousand construction factories um we'll get that up to two thousand slowly as well i find that two thousand construction factories is usually a pretty decent amount um especially once you get your construction rate technologies up higher uh, research labs are slowly working out and water main mines so um mineral titanium and poronide have officially run out so we have to rely on our other mines for those. Uh, Tritanium obviously is coming from UX25. And do we have anything? Yeah, we're getting some cobalt from um, Shamaus. And once that runs out, we'll move some mines elsewhere. <clears throat> For research, we do have a bunch of techs. That's what we're working on at the moment. Get some fire uh, rank control range up. Get the shipbuilding rate up so we can get the some ships out faster. Um, working on missile techs some more. And we're working on uh, Stellarator Fusion um, power. Get those up. So that's what we're working on now. There we go. So now we have... A ship in orbit of Sol, of Luna, which is ah, it's a terraforming site now. There we go. So we've got 39, 39. That's a bit strange. Thirty modules. Where's the other nine coming from? Oh, of course, of course. Um, that's uh, this. This is one of the big benefits of having orbital terraformers. Um, once again, like asteroid miners, we are getting both planetary governors, sector governors, and captains supplying their bonuses to terraforming so although we only have 30 modules we are getting an additional nine modules worth so does it give me the calculation no it doesn't give me the math but essentially we're getting an additional nine terraforming modules worth of production which is fantastic so terraforming first thing that you want to do is get your oxygen so you select your oxygen, add gas, and want 0.1 atmosphere. 0.1 atmosphere is the bare minimum that your human population needs. And once you hit save atmosphere, that will set your desired atmosphere to 0.1. And as we advance every production cycle, 
see, you'll notice that it's adding atmosphere. So it's adding 0 0.0011 atmospheres um, per five days. And we want to get it to 0 0.1. So that will take a while. Terraforming is a very slow process unless you go completely bananas with terraforming modules. Um, it will take a very long time. Not a big deal. It's not supposed to be quick. Um, like I said, unless you go berserk with it. Uh, but once once you get people there, we actually have a little habitat capacity. That's from the terraform because of the orbital hab. Um, once you get people over there, and once you get it habitable, then you're going to be swell. Um, we'll actually set Earth as source of colonists for now because they got to go from, come from somewhere and it can't be, you know, anywhere else because they don't have any people anywhere else. So this way, Earth is on away. There it is. So now our colony ships should hopefully think about moving some people across. So are they going to do anything? Yeah, so they're loading colonists. And they're taking them to Mars. I think Mars actually is a colony. Where's Mars? Mars, here we go. Yeah, it's got some infrastructure. So that will actually kickstart... Yeah, they'll actually do a very fairly reasonable kickstart of trade. So, trade. Every population has trade goods, right? Um, I might as well cover wealth in general. So, this is your, your annual wealth, right? So, wealth is basically the summary of monetary and commercial power that your empire can bring to bear. So it pays for pretty much everything. It pays for your workers. So you'll see that your scientists, not your lead scientists, but your, your sci worker scientists require payment. Um, your construct, your con industry requires payment. Um, this is actually left over because we finished the peri, they'll go away. Uh, when you're buying minerals from civilians, that they require payment. So everything that you do, that your workers in here do, um, you pay for in wealth, right? And in return, certain things will give you wealth. So population will obviously um, give you wealth in terms of tax. And a lot of the things that civilians do will also give you tax as well. So the mining modules that you sell to civilian sector, you do make money of the, off that because you tax them. All right, so you get 125 wealth per complex, right? Um, which is half the wealth of... Uh, actually paying for it. So you pay twice what you get in terms of tax. Um, uh, well, here we go. Okay. So whenever they ship things like colonists or, or trade goods or pretty much anything that they ship um, using freighters, then you'll get tax on that as well. And that's based on various factors. Um, not really worth going into, but because they may, you can't really don't have any control over them anyway. But essentially, um, they will um, make the best wealth for you. Um, so trade goods, right? Each planet will consume. Well, each planet will produce trade goods. Um, and a starting planet that doesn't have any population produces nothing. Once you get a little bit of a population, they'll start producing a few bare essentials. And then as they get bigger, they'll start producing things like luxury goods, like wines, spices, recreational drugs, furs, right? So they'll get these luxury goods and they'll produce uh, an amount of them um, along relatively, uh, well, relative to the population of the actual planet. However, some things they won't be able to produce. So a certain number of these trade goods will be produced um, in a quantity 
insufficient to supply its own population, right? So there will be a shortfall. So for Earth, pharmaceuticals is a, short, is a heavy shortfall. Precious metals is a heavy shortfall. Wines is a shortfall. Um, obviously, a, a, a alien artifact is a unique trade good in that the only way to a plant colony will ever produce it is if there is a um, an anomaly. Uh, or something special on that planet. So settling those planets, even if you're not going to be able to, even if you're not actually going to use those anomalies, is beneficial because uh, it's the only way to produce alien artifacts and every planet will want them, um, which means that it's pretty much a guaranteed high-value trade. It's fantastic. Um, so obviously some, some of them will be in surplus, which means, or a lot of them will be in surplus, which means that civilians will want to transport them elsewhere. So it's very similar to uh, to this, except it's completely automated. So they will go to a planet that, they will, they will find a planet that has a surplus and a planet that has a shortfall, and they will ship those goods from the surplus to the shortfall until there's no more shortfall or there's no more surplus. Um, you, and you'll see how much is actually available for import and export from that planet, because obviously once you start shipping them, these numbers will go down. Um, what this basically means is that even if a planet does not have any actual minerals on it, um, it's still potentially worth colonizing because you'll get these trade goods that will give you wealth. And wealth is one of those things that is only produced in very limited, um, not necessarily limited, but in very specific ways. So if you, and it has a devastating effect if you run out. Running at a deficit, like I am at the moment, is fine. But if you run out, and then it will impact this factor, right? What is it? This one? No, this one. Yeah, it will. It will. It will impact this one. As your wealth runs down, if your as if your wealth hits zero, this will start to go down. Um, and because it's empire wide, it can quickly kill your industry. All right. So it will shut down your industry, it will shut down your mining, it will shut down your shipyards, it will shut down your research, it will shut down everything. Your empire will grind to a halt, and without any kind of production, it can be an absolute nightmare to drag yourself back out into the black. So you don't have to try and make billions but make sure you're well above zero. Make sure that you are not running in a deficit for too long. Make sure that your wealth remains above zero. Because, like I said, if it hits zero and it goes below zero, you can quickly grind to a halt. Um, the only way to directly generate wealth is through uh, financial centers. Uh, I believe one financial center will use 0.25 million people to generate an additional point of wealth or something like that. Um, but essentially, you build one and they will directly generate wealth um, into your coffers. The easiest way is to just plop down, a, 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 is to just get a colony. Just to get a colony up, get lots of colonies up and running. Um, lots of colonies mean more people. More people means more taxes, more colonies means more trade goods, more trade, um, which means more taxes, and that will easily get you a huge amount of wealth um, to the point where you don't have to worry about it. So it is important to expand, which is why, we, which is one of the, which is what we're doing now. Um, you can, of course, also increase your wealth. This one here through researching where is it expand civilian economy um, each one will provide a cumulative 20 percent bonus to your wealth for uh, for your empire so um, very very useful those <clears throat> All right, let's keep going 
So it will quickly find that Mars will actually start getting people. Now, what's it? There it is. So Mars now has a capacity of, of half a million and it has a population of half a million. Um, however, that population will start to grow, right? Because pop, uh, that's what populations do. Um, because, they're, because they're actually cramped, they'll actually shrink. But that deficit of um, population support will actually uh, pro provide a demand for infrastructure. Now, you might, I don't know if you noticed, but check this out. Infrastructure. A colony will immediately start producing infrastructure. Infrastructure is the first thing. As soon as they have a population, they will start producing infrastructure. So a colony is capable of slowly expanding its own um, its own population capacity. Right? It will produce infrastructure, and that will be added to the here, which will increase here, which will allow you to get more people. Um, however, that's not the only way. Apart from building your own infrastructure, bigger planets, big colonies that don't need any infrastructure will also produce in excess. And your civilians will actually load this infrastructure and ship it to colonies that have excess population. Uh, where are our freighters at the moment? They're still shipping this. So they'll actually ship this before they ship anything else. Uh, the civilian contracts do take precedence over um, anything else or trade goods. So we will have to wait for those to eventually... Right, we've got a lab. We'll stick it to power plant. Um, we will eventually, we will have to wait for them to uh, get the rest of the mines over and across before they'll start building up Mars. But yeah, Mars will very, very rapidly start expanding. And I need to get this one up. And they're still shipping it. We're getting a good amount of resources coming in as well. Okay, so we have a first salvage wreck. Well, actually, we've been salvaging a lot. So you'll notice that uh, it's finally actually finished. So salvage reports, right? So it's managed to salvage a few lasers, um, reactors, lots of minerals and resources. Um, Geological survey sensors, thermal sensors. So basically, components that managed to survive the destruction or uh, the assault. Uh, so let's see what we've got. So we managed to pick up a bunch of resources. We've got two gravitational surveys, three geological surveys, a thermal sensor, uh, a couple of lasers, lots of reactors, um, and a bunch of sensors. So, and looking at the capacity got seven tons so it's a good thing we haven't we didn't try and salvage the city because we would run out and would have wasted it so we will unload ship components um unfortunately there's no unload all ship components um i don't know if steve watches my let's play and it would be awesome if he did um and I think somebody has actually mentioned it on uh, the forum somewhere. I think it's actually mentioned uh, that he's thinking about doing it as well. But un being able to unload all loaded sh um, ship components would be an absolutely awesome um, order to have. Because f for salvagers, when you have lots and lots of components, it can be a nightmare to unload all of them. Because it has to do them all in, in um, batches. But that's now done. Wait for it to finish, or, uh, finish its order. There it is. 
and what's it done? Did it have to load? I think why I told the facts have to load. Um, no, we want to unload all minerals. There we go. Perfect. So that now we can salvage the Sydney. <clears throat> that was quick. Right up. Um Oh, Sydney was a freighter. That that that's why. Anyway. Uh, what do we get out of it? Almost 20,000 tons worth of stuff, so that's very nice for the commercial drive. Um, we'll drop that off at Earth as well. So, unload components. There we go. So that is the basic of salvaging and wealth. What's our time like? We've still got a few minutes. So, so we've got so we so we covered wealth, we covered terraforming, and we covered uh, salvaging. So I think next, uh, I think what I might do next is wait for things to build up a little bit and then for the next episode I'll probably um, start recording again hmm. just thinking I'll probably start exploring again I think next episode we'll, we'll want to start exploring again um, regardless of what we might actually find. Ah, we can actually pull this one now. Um, I think it's in Melbourne. Melbourne is a laser destroyer. Might even think about redesigning these, but no, we, we want a couple of laser destroyers just in case we run into anything um, dangerous. So, we'll set for the Melbourne, and we'll start building one. Um, and we'll also grab an extra slipway, because we're going to need more. So, what was I saying? Yeah, so, I'll build up a small combat fleet again, get the basic operations up and running, um, and we'll start exploring again. In the meantime, we'll do colonization of Sydney and Canberra. Uh, maybe get a little bit of a fortification set up around that wormhole um, just in case or at least get the system protected uh, in case the invaders do come back. Namely, if and when, when I turn them back on. Um, but I don't necessarily want to expose Sydney and Canberra to hostile activity. Um, so I'll probably start exploring through Melbourne and Adelaide. On the other hand, Sydney and Canberra can serve as fuel and forward posts. So it might be worthwhile exploring through them instead. They only have a single jump point anyway, so it's not going to be too difficult to um, fortify them. So we'll, th we'll think about a little bit about which way we want to expand and we'll... Um, well, we'll, 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 we'll see how we go. I think Sol still has an extra... Unexplored... Yeah, we, yeah, we still have one in Sol, so we might actually try going through that one, but yeah, we'll see. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Um, we'll put a cut, we'll continue on the next one, and thank you for watching, and see you tomorrow.